So today we are going to create this track. So this is what you guys voted for earlier this week in the YouTube poll and I've put a link to another poll below so if you want to have a say in what I make for the channel make sure to click that link. Thanks for taking part. Euphoric trance from the 90s and the early 2000s were really what got me into dance music as well as bands like The Prodigy but we're talking about producers like Ferry Corsten, Paul Van Dyke, BT, Classic Tiesto, really huge tracks with massive build-ups beautiful breaks that just bring tears to your eyes and you can raise your hands to the lasers. Now in homage to those days, because I feel like trance often lacks some of that emotion, that euphoria nowadays, I want to create something in that style. So without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. So first thing we need to touch upon is the vibe and we're gonna cover everything. We're gonna cover the vibe, the arrangement, the chords, writing the bass line, the beat, everything you need to create the euphoric trance track. So as I said, first thing is the vibe. We've already touched upon the fact that there are big build-ups and there are big euphoric breakdowns, but then what happens at the beginning of the tracks and on some of the drops is that you have a really driving bass line and driving beats, and the tracks will usually start just playing the root note of the, the track, go into the chord progression, have your big build-up, have your big chords, and then after that build-up, the drop comes in with all the chords and all the bells and whistles. So with that in mind, let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is choose 140 BPM, which is, you know, a good trance tempo. And we're going to just choose a key that we're going to write this in. Oh, I need to name this bad boy, don't I? Okay, euphoric trance, mm, let's call this euphoriosity. It's done. Okay, and as usual, you can download this when I've done it anyway and pick it apart. So let's work out the chords first. Now, it doesn't really matter which key you choose. And in the door nowadays, most of them have got the scale feature where you can just choose a key. Usually it would be based in a minor key. So I'm just gonna choose, I don't know, F sharp minor. And now if we press scale, it's only going to be showing the keys from within that track, which is what I used to call my template technique, but now they've kind of built that functionality into the door anyway. So what we are going to do is color this uh, cyan. We're going to call this chords, and cyan is, for regular viewers, a natural color of synths in nature. So let's work out these chord progressions. I'm going to do it with just a piano at first that we will be using, using just the stock plugins from Ableton, but you can follow along using Serum or any other door, any other synth, so this is still going to be useful. So we can press the scale button. First thing to do, work out a bass line about eight bars long, I think. One, two, three, four, one. So let's make this twice as long for a really epic chord progression. Just double this up and start drawing in some of these bass notes. So we may as well start from the root note of the track, which is the F sharp. So let's find an F sharp. Here we go. And turn on the metronome. So it's quite an epic progression. This is the bass line to it. Let's have some tea, that'll help. Tea always helps. So with the chords over the top, they're gonna to be beautiful seventh chords with ninths and eleventh, and I'll show you how to do that, but it's gonna make them really lovely and beautiful sounding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extend each note out, and I might take these top notes down one octave, just so it's all a bit closer together. So the bass then goes down. And now let's build a synth. I'm gonna use the wavetable for this, but as I said, you could use Serum. I could use Serum. It doesn't really matter. I mean, the, the concepts still apply. So we start off with a saw wave. Let's turn this down a bit so we don't run into clipping on the master channel and have a listen to this so far. So that's going to be the basis of the track. Now let's build out those chords. Now the easy way to do this, in fact, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to put it into the bass channel and we're going to use this as our bass line as well. Let's just color that yellow. We might put an octave down for the bass, another wavetable. 
maybe two octaves even. And I'll move these two up, otherwise it's going to be too low and we won't hear it. And let's make that a sawing. So that's going to be our bass line. But anyway, we'll go back to the chords now. So all we need to do is using this scale mode, just skip a note each time. So if we take scale note off, you can see there's a little template of what those notes within that key are. And we're only going to be using those diatonic notes. That is to say notes from within that key of F sharp minor. But we'll press scale again and just use this easy technique. And if you build a seventh chord, it's instantly going to sound lush. And that's the euphoria that we want. That's the feeling that we're after. Now, sometimes if your seventh note sounds weird, you can actually push it up to the octave just to even that out. Like that. I quite like it there. Skip a note, skip a note. So you can see they're like hamburgers. You could do this pretty much. That might, one might sound weird. Yeah, so that's a diminished chord, which is why we need to push that up to the next closest note, which is just the octave above. So let's add one more note above on each of these. So we've got the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth. Yes. Beautiful. Great, so now let's make that into the kind of strings that we're gonna have in the break. And then we are going to create a Ferry Corsten type massive build up riff, which is gonna be the main idea for the track. And we will be using these chords to do it. But let's, let's build this into a nice string sound. So we'll just add a little, little bit of attack, longer release, so the no, notes are smoother and blend into each other. Add some unison and we'll take the filter down a little bit. Oh, yes. Now, what I'm going to do is add some reverb on the auxiliary channel. So, I've created this by default. I've just got an auxiliary channel there. I've put a long haul reverb on it boosted up the volume of the reverb because on Ableton the stock ones are a bit quiet and I've just taken out the low end so let's add some of that to our chords. Instant euphoria. Now let's build that absolutely killer Ferry Corsten style riff. Now to do that I'm just going to create a new MIDI channel. I've got my magic list here but I'm not really using it, I'm just kind of going on my gut. So we are going to call this main riff. We're going to bring these chords in and this bit might take a little bit of time so I might end up fast forwarding this but I'm going to explain the process before I do that anyway. Now the synth I'm going to use for this is Serum. The reason being I already built a Ferry Corsten patch and you can get that when you download this project below anyway. But there is some nuances to it, so it's going to take quite a lot of time to do it from scratch. But you can see I've got quite a few parameters dialed in. But it's basically a big saw wave that you can turn down with a filter and it goes all plucky and lovely. So anyway, this is how we are going to create that Ferry Corsten style System F carte blanche Guriella type riff. So we're going to use these chords as the there's the sound. We're going to use these chords as a template, but we're going to put a note on every 16th and just give it this really cool feel. So to do that, I'm going to turn the tempo right down to make this easier for me to work on. And let's just create our kind of own arpeggio. You can do it with an arpeggiator, but I prefer the control you get if you just do it on your own.
And as long as you're hitting notes within the key of F sharp minor, or whatever key you're working in, it's gonna sound pretty good. Now the easiest way to do this is draw in like a syncopated rhythm just on the bass note of each chord first, like this. So just step two sixteenths each time. So one, miss two, and then we hit, hit another one. I, I might actually do that there. Let's speed this up so we can hear what's going on. And then just follow that to the chords. And you can, you can do this and select them both together and it will kind of give you a bit of a clue as to what's going on. So you can see, you can, you can kind of visually follow it if that's easier for you, but I'm just doing it by ear. Now we are gonna fill in the blanks because we need every 16th to be hit. And this is when I'm gonna turn the tempo down. I might fast forward this or you might just have to watch me. <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning. And it's a good idea to follow the same shape. So each time I'm gonna hit that note and then go down to a lower note and then hit the one in between them. So down, note. And this just gives it, you know, familiarity. If it's completely random all the time, people won't be able to lock into that as a melody. And you can be, you know, you can switch things up now and again, but just make sure you're listening back to see if it works. And when we start going up, I'm still gonna be going down but I want to bridge that gap slightly more, so I might go up to there. And then I might duck down to the A. So these lower notes are now following the shape of those upper notes as well. It's painstaking, but it's worth it if you want this effect. And then back. So let's have a listen with the chords, make sure it's working. Uh, we need to keep these low notes on the roots, I think. So if we always make the low note hit the root note of the chord, but just one octave down, it again gives it some, gives it some familiarity. following the same pattern. And now when we've pretty much got everything in, let's listen to that a bit faster and hear if there's any extra little effects that we can add into this melody to make it more interesting and more memorable. I like it when it hit the, hits those higher notes, actually. So let's pull this out and try and repeat some of these notes here. Yep, so that's, that, that is pretty much hitting those notes, which is good. So you can always actually hit the root and then the fifth and then just do the melody with the top notes. That's something I've just discovered, which is quite nice, because it just gets my heart and it says, yes. And again, it's all just playing with the notes within this, this scale.
Yes, oh my goodness. Okay, so now what happens when you use the filter cutoff, we can have our break that sounds something like this. This is absolutely banging. So we can start off low like this. On to the next thing. I am gonna use my magic list here. We should probably put some beats in here. So this is the, the kind of main break section. So now let's build up the beginning. As I said, the beats would start and we'd probably just be holding on the root note of the track. And let me know if you're enjoying this, guys. Give me a hell yeah. Or an amen, brother, and have a sip of tea. All right, easiest thing to do is just get a kick in there. So I'm gonna to go to my favorite kicks. And you should always have favorites folders, just makes working way quicker. And I've got a new sample pack coming up actually, so let me know in the comments if you're interested in hearing it. It's taken a lot of time to build, but it's got my very best samples in it. Okay, we'll put the kick in there. Let's just program in that beat. There we go, just repeat. Nice and simple. And it's an eight bar loop, so I'm just gonna extend it. Now, we need a bass line for the beginning parts and not the main drops and not the break. Something that just hits that root note. So I'm gonna create a secondary bass line for the, this one is just gonna be used for the break. So let's call this break bass, like so. Let's call this break bass too. Keep things nice and organized. And this is our main bass. And we want something really gurgly and rhythmic. That's a technical term, by the way. So let's put bass. And again, I'm just going to use the wavetable and program something in, just hitting that root note, which is F. And it's all about the rhythm here. So working on those 16ths to make sure it's dancing with the kick drum. You want to really get this sounding good without any other sounds. That's the hallmark of a strong bass line. If it's just a kick in the bass and you, you're just grooving. This sounds like the actual bass line from Varicocia. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the style we're going for anyway. So that is what we're going to use as our repeating bass line. Very simple, just dancing around those kick drums on the 16ths. And now let's make this into an interesting sound. So again, I'm going to put a saw wave as the main sound. Put it down a couple of octaves. We want this to be monophonic, so the bass notes aren't bleeding into each other. And let's tweak the shape of this, the ADSR shape. Let's add a sub oscillator. could separate this into a separate sub bass channel but I'm not going to just for speed's sake. Let's add some unison. Checking in mono. You know production techniques are a bit more advanced now. The plugins are more advanced so you can actually get a way better sound. You can get more clear mixes, you can get louder sounding mixes. If you listen to a Euphoria trance track from 1996 compared to what you could produce nowadays, you know, nowadays are gonna sound way more powerful, way more clear. So we can use our modern techniques to, but still try and get some of that euphoria um, aesthetic to it. That still sounds good, even though it's got unison. Turn it down a little bit. So now let's add some real movement to this. This is really important, adding movement and development over time with this. So I'm gonna add a compressor. 
I'm going to call this SC comp, standing for sidechain comp. And I'm going to press this sidechain button and take the input from my sidechain channel, which is here. You could take it from a kick, but I prefer to take it from a very short, sharp tick because it gives me more control over the length of that the kind of duck. And it's going to allow our kick drum to cut through the mix a bit more. So that's too much. So we've already added movement to it. Now let's change the texture of this sound a bit. I'm going to take the filter down. I'm going to add an envelope to control that filter. So in this synth, we need to go into the matrix view. Nice. So now this shape is controlling our bass. But we could also add an LFO to control that too. So I'm going to go back to the matrix and I'm going to assign LFO1 to also control the filter frequency of this, the, the filter cutoff here. I'm going to make sure that re-trigger is turned off so that it's not re-triggering the LFO with every hit of the bass. It's just going to keep going as the bass line's playing. Um, and it's just going to add another layer of movement. So you can hear, even though the envelope's still controlling it, it's also being controlled by that LFO that's just going in and out. Nice. Now I want to add an extra layer of texture to that sound. So I'm going to turn the second oscillator on. I'm going to go up to, I don't know, complex distortion. Let's see what happens when we put one of these on. more harmonics, way more interesting. I'm also going to warp this. Um, I'm going to assign the exact same LFO. So LFO1, I'm going to assign that to this warp position here. And that's just going to develop that sound slightly over time. So you can see. In fact, no I won't, I'm going to assign that to the second LFO and have the LFO be a slightly different time. I'm going a bit kind of in depth here, but um, this is just to add movement to that bass and we've got one more trick up our sleeve as well. I'm actually going to let that re-trigger that second LFO, so it's kind of like an envelope at that point. That sounds pretty good. Now, the last and not the most important, but pretty important part of this bass is I've got a, an auxiliary channel here dedicated for the bass. At the moment, it's just a reverb, a short, sharp reverb. So if we turn that on, it sounds like this. Kind of cool. Just adds a little bit more space to the reverb, uh, to the bass, with the low end taken out so we don't get a horrible muddy low end. But I want to add some more movement. So what I'm going to do is put on an echo unit, which is a delay unit. And I'll put that first. I need to make sure that it's not 100% wet for the reverb, otherwise we won't really hear the delays. It'll all sound really washed out and reverbed. And then put this on ping pong mode. So now we've got that delay as well, bouncing around. That's cool. Okay, on to the next step. That is... I could do the drums. Let's do the drums. Now we've got this groove going. So I'm going to program these drums in, but you could use a loop. I usually augment like one-shot drums and a loop just to give it a, another layer of texture. But I'm going to go to, again, my favourites. I'm going to go to my favourite claps. And I'm going to go for a 909 clap because quite a lot of the sounds that they would have used in the 90s were from the TR909 drum machine by Roland. 
So I want to keep some of that classic feel, but you could, you could put any snare or clap in that just works with your existing sounds, but I'm gonna do a clap for this track, I think. Now, I want to add a little bit of a BBE seven days, one week feel to this clap. First, I'll put a little skip there at the end, again on the 16th. 16ths are absolute gold when it comes to dance music. You don't need to go higher resolution than that, and that's the sweet spot for creating groove and interest anyway. Like, so simple, and it's already getting me grooving. Now, this is what we are gonna do. We are going to use this room reverb here, which I've created as an auxiliary channel. Again, just a simple room reverb, um, very short decay. But I'm gonna use this as a gated reverb effect, specifically for the clap. Um, or I'm, I'll create a separate one for the clap, actually, because I might want to use that room reverb for any other things. So I'll put clap, I'll put clap reverb, color it pale green, so I know it's specifically for a drum. I like to keep organized, it's good for you. And we will put a reverb on there. And we want to create this kind of tsh, gated reverb sound. So let's do that. Firstly, we'll need to go into our drum rack, open up the routing, open up the returns, right click, create return chain. Just rewatch this bit if this is confusing. Choose clap reverb. And now I've got these controls here. Close that back down if I've got the send button pressed. So I can send this clap from the drum rack directly to that reverb. So let's have a listen. Now to create the gated reverb sound, you can either play with the pre-delay like this, but I find that a bit harder so, uh, to be accurate, so I'm gonna keep the pre-delay there. I'm gonna take a compressor, this is a bit wizardy, this, and I'm going to, can I actually take it from that specific uh, clap? I don't think I can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to separate out that clap channel like this, I'm gonna right click, extract chains, and that is going to create, where is it? this channel here, but let's call it clap. And this is just going to be the clap. And that's really useful because now I can treat this as its own channel. So when I go back to my gated reverb, I need to redial in that B clap reverb. Now I can put a sidechain compressor after that reverb, open it up and take the input from the clap channel and What's gonna happen is that the clap is gonna trigger that um, sidechain compressor. It's gonna duck the reverb, and then as soon as the clap finishes, it's gonna allow that reverb to kind of bounce back. So let's have a listen. So that's creating that gated reverb sound. So instead of that, like that BBE seven days, one week tune. Great, I'm loving this already. Oh, I love this music. Okay, on to the next step. That is, I'm just gonna add a 909 open hat. Again, keeping things simple. Let's go into our drums keep things classic. These are also the sounds that you'd use to create modern tech house as well. Uh, I'll go to my favorites, Silly Billy, quite literally. So open hats, 909. Then I'm going to go to the classic mode and make, make sure that release is on zero, decay is on zero so that Every time the MIDI note finishes, the sound stops immediately because we don't want it kind of washing over into the other instruments. And this is the kind of modern production techniques that help our, us be able to make cleaner, better sounding mixes nowadays. 
So I can have it stop exactly when the other kick starts playing, very simply. So let's just program that in, every other in between each kick. Take out some of the low end, I think this is a bit of a dirty sample, as it were. Let's turn down the volume. Nice, okay, now let's get a shuffle. Now for this, I think I will, shall I use a loop? I mean, it's the easiest thing to do. So I'm not going to do it. Huh? I'm just gonna use a sample from the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit. I'm gonna go and find some kind of shaker. Um, that would be in. This one, I'm gonna use this and I'm just gonna give it a slight attack to make it more into a shaker. So let's program this on every other 16th. Actually, we'll pre program it on every 16th, like so. I'm gonna just copy and paste it. And we want to give this movement. So let's have a listen to it on its own. To give it movement, we are going to just copy this sidechain compressor from the bass and put it after that hi-hat or that shaker, and that's gonna make it bounce in time with the kick. Now let's tweak the sample, give it a bit of attack. So it's just a subtle shaker. So let's listen to the drums on their own now with the shaker. And let's put an auto pan on there to add more movement. It's all about the movement. So that should pan it left and right. with the bass line. Excellent. Now what we need to do is add a top repeating motif. So I'm gonna put this down here. Don't worry, it's all gonna come together very soon. I'm gonna call this motif. And again, this is just gonna be a short repeating motif that just works with the bass line. Now let's create it from scratch. Again, let's use the wavetable just because we're using that anyway. Motif, want a short sound, a short plucky sound, so that's what we're going for. And once again, you can press scale, choose the scale you're working in. And this just makes it so much more easy, guys. Then you can press scale and it's showing just the notes. But it, you know, it's good to kind of base it around the root of the track, or the fifth of the track, and the third of the track, and the seventh. So this is the first, the third, the fifth, and that's the seventh. So if we just make it dance around those four notes, it's gonna sound really good. It's a bit high up at the moment. Yes, I like that. So now I'm just gonna repeat that. And something magic's gonna happen when the chords change, because that's gonna work over the chord changes as well, just keeping it exactly the same is gonna sound amazing. So let's just tweak the notes slightly, make it more interesting. Let's put another 
the rosinator. Again, let's add some movement to it. So I'm going to go into the LFO again. I'm going to assign that to um, its wavetable two position. Make sure that I've got re-trigger turned off. Just add some interest. Let's add some envelope to it as well. Okay, now let's make this really sound cool. You could do that with an auxiliary channel, but I'm just going to do it on the channel it, of itself, on the channel itself, sorry, for uh, brevity's sake. So let's add a ping pong delay there. But we want this to have reverb as well. So I'm just going to add it again from the full reverb, which is C. Now, when the chords start coming in, oh, this is where it gets beautiful. So we've got the chords here, and remember, when the track starts, it's just on the root note of the track. So let's just bring these chords in by using a filter. So these are our chords. What we are going to do is add a, I mean, you could do it within the sound itself if you've got a, a filter there, or you could add, add it after the fact, you know, with an auto filter. But let's just fade these in with the filter. So our track's grooving, just building up. And you can have little bits of Hey Candy, now listen to this when the chords come in. Taxi. Oh, yes, yes. I'm gonna put a sidechain compressor on there as well, just to help those chords bounce. Better than that, I'm going to show you a really nice advanced tip. I'm going to create another auxiliary channel and I'm going to make a multi-tap delay. And the way I'm going to do this is, I've actually created one anyway, so let's just look at it. EDM tips multi-tap delay. So all it is is several different delays and each one has got a different delay speed. And then I've got phasers and flanges and whatnot after them just to create some really cool stereo effects. So let's listen to this. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's give this pump compressor at the end the input as well so it can dance with the... So this is our side chain. Okay, right, now we are getting close to everything being in place and we can bring it all together. Last thing I want to add to this before I do the builds and the arrangement is like a piano melody over the top. Think of Vericoche carte blanche. So we go pillet, piano melody, and have a sip of tea, absolutely essential. And this is just something that, that just adds a little bit of extra interest to the track and keeps things rolling along. So I'm going to just go piano. I wouldn't use the Ableton piano for this. I would actually use probably Contact and the Giant piano. But I want to keep as much to Ableton as possible today, so let's use this. And now again, you can, you've got your scale selected, so it makes it easy. Let's turn it down a bit.
This is just ripped off from Vericosia this, but it's just to give you an idea. Actually, no, I'm not gonna rip it off. I don't need to, because that already sounds nice. And then I'm actually gonna create a second one with a harmony that plays. This is my own invention, because I just think it'll sound cool. Why is that not changing the grid? The grid's hard to see. I suppose I could actually just change the settings. Now, you, using this template technique, you can see I'm just missing a note in between each one, and it's going to sound good. So it can develop into this. That's going to sound beautiful. OK. Now, let's process this piano, probably by putting it up an octave. Yes. Now let's add some real big reverb to that. I'm going to create a specific reverb just for the piano. Piano, reverb, and I will use the hybrid reverb for this. It's a beautiful sounding reverb. I think it's new in Ableton 11. And if you don't know how to use Ableton, you probably shouldn't be watching this video yet, but you can check out my Ableton Live for 11 beginners course or a video I've linked to there if you've just opened it up for the first time. But you're probably not watching by now anyway. Okay, let's find a good preset to use. Cathedral huge, see what that sounds like, and feed some of this piano melody through to it. All right, sounds great. I'm going to take out the low end. That'll do for me. Okay, we pretty much got all the things that we need. So now let's build this into an interesting track. And oh, we we'll need we need snare intros, don't we? So I'm gonna just create another channel. I'm gonna call this snare rolls because it's trance. You've got to have snare rolls, and then you've got crashes and rises. But I'm not sure. Well, we'll see how we go. I'm enjoying this a lot. So let's call this snare. I'm going to use a sampler for this. And I, that's important because you want to be able to change the pitch range. Ideally, to be just one octave up, so 12 semitones. So when you do a pitch bend, you're going from one octave up to the other. Just keep things sounding really nice. Um, so drum hits, let's find a snare, suitable snare. There we go, a nice classic 909 snare. That will do perfectly, in fact. So let's just program this in every 16th, as you would expect. Let's just repeat that. And what we want to do is create a velocity line where we're going from very low velocity up to maximum velocity. Then we're going to assign that velocity to both volume and also a low frequency cutoff. Now, I always forget how to do this. So let's see if I just make an app. They changed it. No. Okay. Is it? No. It was so much easier in Ableton, the other Abletons. Okay. You have to choose draw mode and then it's option if you're using Mac and whatever the equivalent would be in Windows. So then it draws a nice line and it always misses the first one. It's not great to be honest. Here we go. So now it's automatically assigned to the volume. We can hear the volume getting louder as the velocity increases. <laughs> but we also want to assign this filter to that velocity as well, like this. So now the filter opens up as the velocity increases. Just a little addition there. And let's add some width to this by using the room reverb. OK, let's just create something on the fly then. I'm going to move this and let's do it. Insert some space. 
making sure this little fellow is turned off so that we are moving any automation. We don't have any yet, but just be aware of what that button does, that lock button. Okay. So let's have a build up that much. We'll start there. We won't start with the chords yet, or the piano. Actually, it's better lower. Let's add that as well. Just big impact. Okay, I'm gonna to have to do this. I'm just, I'm just riffing on this, okay. We need a back impact. You know, in Vericosia, there was a reverse piano sound. So let's just find something else. Now for this main riff, this is what we need to do. We need to fade this in. So we're gonna start from low down. We need to automate this parameter. So I'm gonna press configure, select this one, and then let's and we're gonna build it up from quiet. Let's bring in the chords. This bass here, filter down, and we're going to make this a bit smoother. Let's turn it down an octave. Open up this filter a little bit. The envelope, assign that to this frequency. Maybe that's too low. Maybe a sine wave is, is good enough, actually. I think so. Just to add some low-end energy in that build. I would spend more time over, you know, choosing the right effects, but I really just want to be showing you the, the fundamentals behind this. So let's do it. And then we go back to the... And then we'll just... Oh, it's getting really loud actually. I'm shouting, I'm sure. And then we take the filter back down and we just repeat this first part of the track. Like this, for our build.
Okay, that's pretty much how a big room track would be in the 90s or the early 2000s. So let's just get that build up there. Um, okay, so obviously we need those snares. Uh, yes, come on snares, I'm gonna make you twice as long. You, daddy will be so proud. Actually, I'm gonna make you four times as long. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Okay, once again, let's just create that nice line all the way up to, to there. Actually, no, I did that incorrectly. That should have been enough. So let's just go in, create that line up to there. I'm gonna start it from not quite so low so you can hear them straight away. But just quiet, like so. Okay, now the last part of this, apart from obviously, you know, needing to put the effects in, all of that stuff, a little drum intro, which I don't think I need to show you because, you know, you should now know how to create the track apart from this little bit. So, what we are going to do is make sure that this is full guns blazing, hands in the air, sound as a pound, Charlie Brown, and then get the bass line in there. Now, because we've got the chords changing on the drop, this is where the bass line needs to follow the chords. So at the beginning and the end of the track, the motif is sounding great just over the root note of the track. Et voila. Maybe I'll turn that down an octave. Maybe a bit high. It's got more of its own frequency space up there. Okay, so for the bass line here on this drop, we need this to follow the chords. And we've already worked them out here. You know, it's the F sharp, it's the A, it's the D, and it's the E. All we need to do is make this bass line follow. So it's F sharp, then the second one is the A, and then D, E, A, D, E. Amsterdam dance event, easy to remember. So then we move it up to the A and then the D, probably down to the D though. Now it's following the, the chords, so let's bring the Actually, I think it's better without the harmony. symbols. But we need a sidechain compressor on there because it's way too loud, so let's do that. Also, we're going to make sure that the lead synth isn't clashing with the bass by taking out some of the low frequencies. So now it should sound a bit better on the drop. I'm going to take out Okay, now we are going to add a ride symbol. Again, another classic. It's just going to augment the sound. And then we can really bring everything in. 
after that by bringing in the chords as well. So we had these lush chords here. We are also going to be bringing those in as well. Ah, whoops. So we'll bring those in and we'll need to make sure that we've got the side chain compression ducking those as well. Otherwise, again, oh, we've already got that sweet. So let's get that ride symbol in there and we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to go to the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit and find the ride. Nice. Let's bring that in. Again, I'm just going to make sure that it ends as soon as the MIDI note finishes, which is what we want to make the mix tighter. I, I need to add the white noise sweep, actually. And then we are going to have the ride cymbal playing on every eighth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we might need to add a little bit of sidechain compression there as well. It just adds that extra layer of drums, that extra layer, layer of high frequencies. But let's get some, let's get some effects in there. And yeah, hope you're enjoying this guys, I really am. I haven't made this kind of music for a long time. Probably what I started making at the beginning. Oh, that's classic. Yeah, let's have that in the, um, let's have that here. I think a cymbal is going to be the, the most important thing. They're really loud. Yes, you can get in there. Just layering up those effects. Have someone who goes, oh, some opera singer. <laughs> Drop the beat. Do, 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 do. Now the chords. Oh, euphoria. Take me back. So, I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Was there something else to add? Just that you can download this project and remember the key parts of this kind of music. Once you understand how it works, then you can make it. You can download all of the samples and presets completely free. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing my, to my channel and like this video. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, if you want to get your music to a professional level, regardless of the genre, techno, house, drum and bass, whatever, we've helped some of our students get signed to some of the world's biggest dance music labels, play in festivals around the world and basically achieve their musical dreams. So if that sounds good to you and it's what you're serious about, if you really want to get good at music, check out my Accelerator program below this video. Until next time, thanks for watching, cheers and happy producing.